Here's the deal with smell and artificial intelligence. The concept of smell, it comes from the molecules that drift into our nose having a specific shape and our nose having receptors that they trigger. Odor molecule, binding nose receptor, come together, boom, electrical signal goes to the brain. That's the olfactory receptor cells in action. But those actual molecules that drift into your nose, those 3D shapes are now being digitalized into 3D models and they're being taught to artificial intelligence. And then boom, you have an AI that can take the shape of a molecule and correlate that kind of in a sense understand what it smells like to the human brain. So if you are wondering when artificial intelligence will tell the difference between a fresh batch of cookies and dirty laundry, that day is here now. Or at least it's like kind of here, but it needs to get a little bit better. But when it does, there's a whole bunch of really interesting use cases that before I made this video, I had no idea, I'd never thought about, and then all of a sudden, I was like, wow, smell actually could be super useful for a bunch of applications. For example, did you know even our weak human nose, you know, compared to like dogs and stuff, can actually smell Parkinson's disease? And I, I kid you not, Parkinson's disease, studies are out there, humans can smell them before any other tool that we know of can detect them. I did not choose this superpower. I was born with a nose that can diagnose. And then other animals, dogs, bees, bears, all sorts of aquatic animals that have much better smell than us. Imagine what they can detect. Definitely things like COVID and Alzheimer's and maybe a whole lot more. And then imagine an artificial intelligence olfactory system that's more accurate than any creature on earth and it has a bigger database, it's seen more examples or, or it's smelled more examples than any of us ever have. But first off, that could definitely revolutionize healthcare and disease detection. Besides Parkinson's, there's diabetes, there's certain cancers that seem to have smells, and maybe we could just check to see if all sorts of diseases that we don't think actually can be smelled could be smelled. They might be smellable in terms of early detection, you know what I mean? What about food safety and quality control? You could imagine how a future AI system that sits in like a shipping truck that moves food around could actually just smell and say, whoa, something in here is rotting, maybe with superhuman sense in a way we never could. That could totally help with the shipping process. Maybe it detects a foodborne illness before any other kind of detection mechanism could. There's a whole bunch of ways I could imagine using it for environmental monitoring also. AI could easily detect pollutants and other toxic chemicals that are in the air, the water, the soil, all around us in our environment. Chemical spills, gas leaks, uh, contamination in water, like that all could have a smell that could give us early detection. Of course, in a city that makes sense, but also on a farm. You could imagine in agriculture that could be early detection for how a crops of a season are gonna go or how a food supply is gonna turn out, something like that. There's the perfume industry, not that I care that much about them, but like we all like pleasant smells and probably an AI that can detect like the optimal smell could also go in reverse and tell us exactly what the optimal molecule is and then you could put that into a perfume. Maybe you could even tweak food to make it smell a certain way. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, but that would also be another way to work backwards with a tool like this. You know, next time at your mall or whatever, and you can smell like Cheerios or Auntie Anne's like coming down the hallway, you know, maybe something like that, but supercharged. What about inside of your home? AI could monitor for mold, gas leaks, fire safety things, maybe asbestos. Maybe we could even correlate like IQ to smell and maybe see if there's something in the environment that's like, causing damage that we don't know of yet. Gosh, in fact, like uh, psychologists would probably love to think about how smell like makes us like winch if it's gross or like open up if it's like really beautiful and clean like a flower or maybe if it's like your loved one or maybe like mating stuff or whatever could all be like worked out, which would be really interesting to them. Pharmaceutical companies could help with laughing gas or those other kind of like medical procedures that have to be smelled or breathed in. Like maybe we could learn all about how those are working or how they could at least be improved. And even just straight up consumer electronics. I mean, why can't an iPhone of the future, an Android phone of the future have an olfactory detector, something where the smells just waft into your phone the same way they do into your nose, and an AI can just understand what smells in your environment. Imagine a smartphone, it detects bad breath while you're talking to somebody. You could like put it in your fridge, or like if something looks expired, but you still kind of want to eat it, you just have your phone smell it. Boom, now you know whether you can really eat it or not. Okay, now before I dive into some of the different companies that are actually mapping out these molecules that are working with smell and artificial intelligence, I wanted to point out one of the most interesting things that I found is that there really isn't a good smell map, basically. Nobody's put together a comprehensive map of what molecules actually do smell like. It's just not been important enough in the history of research and too complicated to do. So for example, color has a map, right? There's an axis on a color wheel, there's red, green, blue, and they're mapped basically by, you know, 
frequency. They're just different wavelengths and you can map them and then you can put a nice little gradual um, slider that says like you go from this color to this color to this color as you move down the actual physical wavelengths. But oddly nothing really comprehensive and completely agreed upon has ever been made for the smell of things, odors. But now with renewed interest in how AI could build some of these products, there's much more incentive, there's also better technology to actually make this map. And that's really what some of these companies are doing for their step one. For example, take one of the leading companies in this department, Osmo. Now this is a startup company that's actually growing quite a bit, but it was originally part of a Google research team and then broke off to become its own thing. They've been very clear with their message, which is to actually try to map in digitalized in 3D all 40 billion molecules that we believe the human nose can smell. Now to give you a sense of how far away we are right now, about 100 million molecules are known out of 40 billion. But once we've done that, we've actually digitalized the human nose. And who knows where that's gonna lead us? Fragrance creation, disease detection, ecological understanding of the toxins we live in. We're talking about sustainability and all sorts of awesome inventions. Okay, so first let me point you towards this paper written in science. It's called Principal Odor Map Unifies Diverse Tasks in Olfactory Perception. But feel free to read the whole paper, but the abstract itself will give you sort of a sense of what is happening here. But basically an AI nose is now predicting smells from the molecular structure alone. Now the reason why this article is important is because pre Previous methods before this paper came out, they struggled to correlate odor with the molecular structure due to all these little exceptions. And those are what are detailed in this paper. Like they basically solved a bunch of little problems to make it work. But they used artificial intelligence. They used machine learning to actually figure out the right way to get around all of these little nuances that were causing problems before. And amazingly, this new AI system can accurately predict these odors. Hence, we're building really quickly the world's first odor map. And the authors also point out that it's giving some really interesting insight into what it is that we can't smell because sometimes the shape of a molecule is slightly tweaked and it smells very different. And sometimes it's slightly tweaked again and we don't smell it at all. And there's patterns in why certain things smell the right way that we're just now starting to discover and why some things don't have any odor at all. And now an open line of research is for people who wanna know about our evolutionary history to smell what it is that we didn't and try to put some correlations together to the environments that we evolved in. And the power of artificial intelligence to create fragrances has not been lost on IBM, actually. IBM Research is actually working with a company called Every Human, and they are on the forefront of innovation when it comes to customized, personalized, very good smelling perfumes. They literally offer something called algorithmic perfumery. Wait, algorithmic perfumery. And that's the process where a user actually fills out a bunch of questions about what they like, and then a custom perfume is made to match that criteria, one of a kind, just for you. Now Simrise is another company that's doing something similar, but instead of individualizing it, they have come up with what should be one of the best smelling perfumes in history. Of course, I haven't smelled this, but in the future you should look for the smell O Boticario if you are ever, I guess at like Macy's or something where they have all those perfumes and see if it actually is as good as AI says that it could be. Because to make it, they had to utilize this vast database of fragrances. And then they grouped them into fragrance families, they used historical data, and then they used machine learning to put it all together into something that would be like the best selling ultimate smell ever. I mean, is that just marketing? Maybe, but maybe not. Maybe AI is here to make things smell really, really good. I know I'm tempted to smell it myself just to find out if it like it's legit or I'm just like, meh, it's good, but like not AI good. I also wanted to point out that another major company that you've heard of before, Meta, owners of Facebook, are also working with a new multimodal model that includes all of our senses. So this model is the first in the world to have a shared representation space for all the different senses. Text, images, video, audio depth, thermal, meaning temperature, and IMU sensor data without requiring explicit supervision. IMU is like a sense of force, which is basically touch. But it's really interesting to have a joint embedding space. These are not like a tool, like a large language model going out and deciding that it needs to make an image, like the way ChatGPT will reach out through the API to Dali when you think you need an image. These are all embedded together. It's much more like the human brain where it's all in the same brain. Important to know that this image bind model, even though you won't be able to use the smell portion of it, is being tacked on. And right now, what it can do is go between images and audio, audio and images, 
text and image to audio, audio to image and audio, and then audio to generated images. But they're fitting smell into that cycle as the time and the technology come to actually replicate the molecules that smell like things and understand the molecules that will fit into it. This is going to be a fully multimodal model. So check this out, image to audio, you know? Click on a dog, get a bark. Click on a tiger, get a... Okay, dog barking, the sound of that, plus the image of a beach gets us a dog on a beach. Anyway, you can imagine how great it'll be when you can smell the pineapple coming soon. And just like how the human eye brings in a lot more information than maybe say the pressure on the skin, meta researchers have shown that they've been capable of doing something very similar where the model can successfully bridge the data even if there's a weaker correlation to something like the IMU sensor, the pressure sensor, than there is from the image data. And that itself kind of demonstrates an emergent property that you can have these mixed embeddings that, that do like what we do. They balance out in a way where the senses aren't overwhelmed with the sense that actually brings in the most information and it all can just work together as needed. Look, artificial, artificial intelligence is completely revolutionizing the nose. Maybe thanks to AI, in the near future, we're gonna be able to smell the world in the same way that your dog does. Make sure to smell that subscribe button. Help me get to 8,000 subs. Thanks.